Thank you everyone for joining. Today is part of the uh, March Madness Metrics Month. And we have here Ashley Collins from Bevy that will present us a very interesting workshop about North Star Metrics. Just before we will begin, I want to share with you that if you haven't seen it before, we in the chapter wants to help set the benchmark and share benchmarks in our specific sector of community-led events. To do that, we're asking your help, suggesting questions and things that you would like to know about the, the programs and what's uh, going on in other companies and other organizations. I will share a link on the chat and it's a doc that you can just drop in questions and we will collect these questions and create a survey and hopefully CMX will help us to distribute it. And then when your management is coming to you and asking you, what are the benchmarks for something? You will have it. That's all for me. Now I'm giving the mic to Ashley excited to be with you to talk about finding your North Star metric for your community. So I am Ashley Collins. I currently live in Chicago, Illinois, born and raised in Minnesota. I joined Bevy almost a year ago and I focus on analytics and integration. So I'm super excited to be here today. But before we jump into the content, I just want to do a huge shout out for our CMX and the March Metrics Madness. So we had two really great resources come out this month. The first one was the 2022 Community Industry Report. And there was also a couple of sessions about that one earlier today. And then there was also a CMX blog I want to call out, which is March Metrics Madness. And that has a ton of resources to blogs that are recently uh, come out or some content from, from earlier on in the year. But those are two great jumping off points. Also calling out some past and upcoming events that are in the CMX community. So if you haven't had a chance um, to register for those, that would be a great resource. One is to call out as a CMX masterclass, which um, is March Metrics Madness with Coros. And so quick agenda, what are we gonna do today? We'll do some welcomes introductions, we'll do breakout rooms, we'll talk about what is this North Star Metric framework? Why do we need a framework? Why are they helpful? We'll explore some input metrics, North Star Metrics, we'll have some Q&A, and then closing room. Also I wanna call out today that it won't just be me being a talking head. I really want this to be an interactive session with all of you. So if you go to that, if you go to the chat, there is a pin message with the whiteboard link. And so with that, we will be doing, or we'll be doing three interactive whiteboard sessions today. And so if you go ahead and click on that, you'll be able to add a little sticky note. So what you do is you, once you click on it, you click on the, the square, you drag it up to the quadrant where we're working, you go ahead and you'll type out your message and you can add as many post-it notes as you want. And this will be a resource for us after today's session. So with that and thinking about the timeliness of what just came out from the 2022 benchmarking study, one of the biggest pain points that community professionals face today is they really struggle in illustrating the ROI that community provides to the business. So for today's discussion prompt, we'll have five minutes and you'll be in breakout rooms with two people, yourself and one other person. And the question will be, how would your role as a community manager change if you could confidently illustrate ROI to the business? So we'll spend five minutes, go ahead and add sticky notes to the board, how your role would change. And we'll see you back in a little bit. How was the group session? I mean, it's just good over on my room. You know, I think Priscilla, Jessica, and Priscilla was talking a little bit about the pressure that can be on a community team in a very technical measurement focused IT organization where the soft skills of community sometimes don't always fit because sometimes it can be very difficult to measure that. And so that was part of our discussion. And I think yeah, Priscilla also talked a little bit about the work going on more broadly around what is the most important North Star for the organization. And because that's not fully defined, it, it sometimes the community work can't feed into that because the organizational goal is also a little bit undefined at the moment. Priscilla, did I get that correct in your, my summary? Yes, you did. Thank you. Right. I'm just jotting that down and do a post-it note. Right. I saw a couple around more budget. And so it looks like there was some financial gains of illustrating the impact, more trust in the roadmap and community actions. Would you be willing to speak more a little bit to that? What kind of trust would, would come out of this and what, what community actions do you envision coming out of it? Being a new community manager, I think the, the most important asset is the trust from the, let's say, higher management. That's why pro providing ROI would provide me that trust. Got it. Thank you. I see a couple people also looking to add post-it notes. So if you come down to your little toolbar here and you click on it and drag it up, 
then you'll be able to add a post-it note and then you can type in your ideas there. I'll move a couple of mine over to the side. Or if you see an empty one, you can go ahead and type in there too. More time to do community building stuff rather than simply spinning on metrics all the time. Aaron, would you be able to share a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So we're, our community is about five years old and we're pivoting from reporting on growth to reporting more on engagement and the actual business value of everything that we're doing. And so even though there's a lot of research and information out there about what we could be reporting on, I think sometimes our access to the right data or what people would find valuable in terms of the right metrics, we're doing a lot of pivoting regularly about what kinds of things we're looking for and how are we measuring it and how are we reporting it. And to what Eli was saying, I think some of us on the team just want to do community. <laughs> we just want to do the, the thing instead of reporting it and trying to figure out how to report it. So having that locked down would be great. That makes complete sense. I see a couple other here around budget and just resourcing as a whole. Actually, let's see, more people to help, more budget, better resourcing for the community. So I think another lever that I see here that's coming out is if I can illustrate ROI, we can have a different type of conversation with our stakeholders about how we are impacting the business. Thank you all for that. If other ideas come to mind, you are welcome to continue working on or adding post-it notes to this section, but we will zip back over into the content. Um, so with that, and before really just jumping into the framework, I also want to take a moment of why it's important to stop every once in a while and think differently about measurement. You can measure the ocean, but if you aren't really thinking about how will the things that I'm measuring impact my long-term success, it's really easy to get lost. So some of the benefits of taking the time to pause and do this is provides a greater understanding of the business impact. We touched on that a little bit about how this ROI would translate into, into your stakeholders. But having a measurement framework is allows you a way to manage your community in a less reactive way. If you have historical data or you understand the data markers that you're looking at that are meaningful to you, now you can focus in and hone in on one thing versus trying to boil the ocean, trying to figure out what the cause was that triggered X. And lastly, empowers you all to be community to be data-led, community-led managers. How do you illustrate the data and translate that and share that with other parts of the business of how you're influencing, whether it be additional sales or reducing support tickets. So that's why it's important today, not only in March and not only for this session, but to stop and think differently about measurement and the benefits that come out of it. So the first part I want to call out, the framework I'm going to lean really heavily on today for today's presentation is the North Star metric framework. There's a ton of frameworks out there. And so the one, the reason I picked the North Star metric framework to us is that's very common in product management, and it's one I rely on um, quite heavily, but it also translates really well into community management and community professionals. And so the goal of any measurement framework is to improve the way in which you manage and build your community management process. So it's really easy to like have a bunch of metrics floating around, but how do you make those, the metrics you select be intentional? And how do you use them to inform other pieces of data or other decisions? around the business. So I want to call it a helpful resource for all of you today that was actually really instrumental in preparing for today, but it's called the North Star Playbook and it was written by Amplitude. And it's about a 60 page, I printed it out, I'm old fashioned, but it's actually a really great resource because it helps you all understand what makes a good North Star metric, what makes a good supporting metrics, how do I get there? And so a lot of today's presentation, if you've already read this resource, will feel very familiar and be akin to this, but I will definitely share this out as a resource for you all afterwards because it's a great place to plug into. But really what the North Star metric framework is, it looks at three different pieces. So it looks at your input metrics, which are your leading metrics, your input metric, things that are really volatile, they'll change over time. You're going to measure them on some type of regular cadence, probably monthly, um, maybe quarterly, depending on what your measurement cadence looks like. All of your input metrics feed into your North Star metric. So your North Star metric, think of it as if you could only rely on one single metric to understand the health and success of your community, what would that one metric be? And that is your North Star metric. So if you had to fly blind, you couldn't have any other data, and you had one, one touch point, this is what your North Star metric is. This is what you're striving for. This is what success looks like. And if you're able to strive up and to the right and reach your North Star metric or that one metric that matters, that will help feed into your mid and long-term business results. So you see how we're trying to make this connection of what is the ta oops, what's the tactical work that you're doing with your community activities and your input, your community activities? How do those feed into your North Star metric? And how do we help shift this conversation from things that I'm measuring and things that I'm doing to illustrating and showing the, yes, Meredith, I will get to some examples for you in a little bit. So please, I'll get there. And another resource I will drop and share for you all is this worksheet. It's really helpful. 
I, again, have this printed out. I doodle things on it, but it's helpful to understand what are some input metrics that make sense, a North Star metric, and then the impacts coming out of it. Examples, here we are, Spotify. They use this framework. And so we know we talked about what is that one metric that matters, that helps them understand the success of their product. That's the time spent listening to music by subscribers. And on the left-hand side, you see how these input metrics, these are some of the examples of things that they track on a regular cadence to understand if they are working towards achieving this. So for example, the number of premium trial users or the number of, of premium subscriptions. Maybe a show of emojis, how many of you all listen to uh, Spotify during the day or on the weekends because they're tracking this and they're trying to understand are, what will it take for you to convert to being a premium subscriber or how often are you listening? So that's one example of a company that uses the North Star Metric Framework. Second one is OpenTable. OpenTable is a restaurant booking software. And so if you're not into talking to people to book a reservation, you can go onto the app or onto the website and you enter the number of people, find a place to eat, and off you go. The metric that matters most to them to understand if people are using their software is a number of seated covers per month. If that's not increasing, something fundamentally is going wrong. And so how do you lean back on these input metrics of the number of people who are booking within every 90 days or the number of active people on the mobile app? So they're using some of these smaller metrics that they track on a regular cadence to understand how that informs their success. The last example I have for you all is Netflix. We probably all watch a little bit too much of it, but it's content is king. And again, this is another organization that uses the North Star metric framework. For them to understand what success is, could be the time spent watching streaming content. So how do we bring this back to community? If you are an acquisition community, perhaps yours could be the number of new organizations that are coming into your community. Maybe you're just using it to generate pipeline. So if you're able to identify new customers and everything along those, that's something that you're success in growing towards, that could be an example there. Maybe if you are a customer-centric community, it could be number of renewals or upsell opportunity or something along those lines. So there's different ways to bring this in to community that will help you understand the impact it's having. So we talked about the framework, what it is, companies, popular companies that use it, but let's really dive into input metrics. So the goal of input metrics, you really wanna start with selecting a small set of metrics that you as a community manager believe you can influence through your community offerings. So your community offerings are perhaps your events. They might be content you're sharing. They might be your forums. There's lots of different modalities in the sense of how you are coming and engaging. So you as a community manager, we are going through and we plan this event today. And so my goal for all of you and coming out of this is I wanna understand how many unique people did I reach that are interested in metrics and how can I help them take it to the next level? And then with those small set of metrics, how do you validate and ensure that they will most directly affect your North Star metrics? So there's gonna be a combination of these metrics that will come in together and help inform the success of your community. Because in, using, going back to the example of today's event, I can't just use event attendance to understand if my community is success, successful. I have to look at it through a couple different lenses. So you could look at it in engagement of a couple of different modalities or time spent in the community or the number of memberships that you have. So there's a lot of different ways you can get there. So input metrics, these are again, these are your leading indicators. So they're gonna be a little bit volatile and that's okay. But the one thing I do wanna call out with your input metrics is that just because an input metric shifts doesn't mean you need to pivot your entire strategy. Use an opportunity of a change in your input metric to say, okay, for example, why did my number of event attendees drop? What happened? How can you carve out some time to dig in there and understand and then focus on readjusting that portion of driving event attendance versus rehoning your entire community strategy to understand what? So that's just a couple of examples there. So going back to those input examples, a couple more, going back to Spotify, OpenTable, Netflix, we also talked about these, but I'll pick on Netflix for a little bit. Number of trial users, number of paying users, number of hours watched per session. So you see how when you combine all of this data together, it helps you understand what is actually going on in the community or at going on below the surface and how those all roll up into that one metric that matters, which is the number of hours spent streaming content. So a quick checklist. How do you, I'm sure you all have metrics all around, but a quick checklist on are the metrics I have Good. Can they be calculated quickly? Because we talked about measuring on a regular scheduled cadence for these, you don't want to spend weeks going through and calculating them. Ideally, you're updating them maybe once a month or something along those lines. So are they simple enough or easy enough that they can be calculated with the data that's available to you? 
Are they easy to measure and remember? This is like my soapbox right here. Every time you create a definition or a metric, make sure it has a clear definition, a clear uh, name, and a clear calculate. That is instrumental in terms of speaking apples to apples, oranges to oranges when other people are looking at the things that you're tracking. And make sure that it's written in plain language so that all partners, not only those in community, but those outside the business, outside of your teams, understand exactly what you're measuring and why it's valuable. It should be something that you can influence through your community. So again, going back to the activities that you as community managers do, planning your events, putting out content, finding chapter members, you know, giving out badges. Those are all things and actions that should be able to influence the metrics that you pick. And lastly, they should be influential and complementary and something that you believe will directly affect your North Star metrics. So with that, we're going to do an individual brainstorming session. So we're going to go back to our Figma board. It'll be about three minutes in length. And for each metric that you track today, go ahead and add it to the board. And we'll be adding it in this quadrant over here with the yellow band. So we will go until about 35 after. So I'll let you go ahead and do that now. And those for you that join. So if you go ahead and you come down to your toolbar, I'll also drag up some post-it notes for everybody. There's a couple up here. Feel free to grab them and, and type in things that, that you measure. And if anybody has questions, feel free to come off mic and I can answer them now or drop them in the Q&A function. It's uh, amazing to see it's filling up so quickly. <laughs> No, definitely. I'm looking for some commonalities. One thing I didn't dive into in my slides, but another way to think about crafting your input metrics is looking at the depth, breadth, breadth and frequency. So if you're thinking about the frequency in which somebody is engaging with your community, the breadth in terms of how deep are they going? Maybe they just join an event and then maybe they become a chapter organizer or then multiple chapter members. So there's different ways in which you can categorize your metrics to help focus them out for you. All right, we'll give it one more minute. All right. So, like, so yeah, the good news is we're all tracking things. We just have to take it to the next step of how do we boil, roll it up into that metric that matters and how do we communicate it to the business so that we can show the impact in the ROI. So kudos, keep up the good work and, and we'll keep going there. Does anyone want to come off mic and, or come onto the mic rather and share about their metrics? If you're trying and you can't technically, Right. I have maybe just an example I'll share because oftentimes I go through and I'll help customers I'll look at their metrics or their definitions that they're creating. And a common metric I see is a number of engaged users. And why I'm picking on this metric is because engagement means a lot of different things. So that's an example of, in, of a metric where having a clear definition and a clear calculation really makes sense because his engagement in the sense of they've attended at least one event is engagement meaning they belong to at least one group. So it's really important to be intentional in thinking about what those metrics mean to all of, to those that are less familiar or less intimate with them. So I'll leave this up here for all of you, but I'm gonna zip back over to my slide. So a couple things to remember about these input metrics that they should be actionable factors in combination and they sh in, in combination and they should contribute to your North Star metric. So this is like the, the drum beat that I'm going back through again. So think about your, met your input metrics working together because we don't want to track the ocean. We want to track a handful of core metrics that will inform the value and the ROI that we're rolling up to the business. And they should be metrics that you should be able to impact. So I saw a couple around like, the number of, if you're hosting events, that's something you can track. It's a cause and effect type thing. So um, this is always helpful there. And then I also want to call, this is a quick snapshot from analytics reporting in the Bevy tool and the dashboard. But these are a couple of your input metrics. We look at the total number of active chapters is something we track. Active tractor, chapters means they're hosting an event here. We also track the chapter growth. Um, part of a community manager is to expand your reach. And so how many new chapters are coming up? How are you engaging new pockets of people? Uh, or geographies. Another example is around the site users, anyone that comes to your community and creates a new profile. So how do we track this and continue that we're having upwards into the right momentum? So in this data set, for example, we had a huge spike of site users in Q3, what happened? So lucky me, I know there was a big user conference here. So this is a data point in the sense of, okay, we had a big spike here, but then we saw trailing off. So what can we pivot a little bit differently in terms of how do we continue upwards momentum or stable momentum of having new people sign up for our site. What can we think about differently of that specific problem 
that we're trying to hone in on. And then engaged site users, as defined in this example, is somebody who has an account and has at least attended one event. So again, this correlates with, oh, I know there's a big user conference here. There is a lot of engagement here, but now it's starting to taper off. So what can I do differently, whether it be from my partners in marketing or from how I'm communicating out to help people continue to stay engaged quarter over. And then lastly, this is a little bit of a different example, but we also look at people becoming deeper into our community. So they create an account first, then they attend an event, then they join a chapter. But the gold star guys is when they become a chapter organizer like Tali and Eli, we want more of them. This is another great way to track the impact. And this is a really meaningful input metric, for example, to customer success or if along those lines, if you can say this number of customers have are associated with posts in chapter organizers, they are more apt to renew. This is the renewal rate for people that are chapter members. And so it becomes a very different conversation for you all in terms of illustrating the ROI and the dedication that comes to you not only participating in the event, but now actually leading and going through a cohort of, of chapter. And so last but not least, bringing this back around from you know, like a very product mindset to a community mindset, ultimately the events and activities that you extend to community members should influence these metrics. So if you're, I saw a lot around resourcing, there's just not enough time. If you're really focused on these core metrics and things that you're trying to achieve, use these metrics as a way to prioritize. Is this meaningful right now? If I'm focusing on attracting new, new chapter leaders, how do I focus on the things that will help me get there? So I will pause there on input metrics. Are there any questions that I can touch on before we go into uh, the next part? So Kimberly had a question, what about the number of active users? Maybe you can elaborate, Kimberly, exactly what do you mean by that? Oh yeah, sure. Hi. So when you were talking about those engaged users, I completely agree with your, with your expression. It sounds very vague. So what about putting a metric, including the term active? Because through those channels, we can, we can observe how many hours that members spend on the channel, for example. So do you think it's measurable or do you think it's, it's meaningful to measure those being activeness? Yeah. I'm going to actually go back a couple slides to my quick examples here. So I think if we look at these examples active, I would maybe even try and drill deeper. How do you make it more specific? So maybe it's the number of events attended in X period of time. Maybe it's the number of forum groups participated in, in X number of time. And I would break those out into separate metrics because I think it would be helpful for you to understand what is engagement in comparison look like to events versus what does engagement look like in comparison to forums? And then helps you as a community manager prioritize where should I spend my time because, or what's happening or what's causing people to do more so over here versus in events. Does that help? Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else come to mind? Question flies, otherwise I can get them the left. All right. So the North Star metric, we talked a lot about this. I did a lot of setting the table for it. Ultimately, this is the metric. We want our stakeholders around the business that if we say one thing, they say, oh my goodness, community is doing it for our business. We want to invest more. We want to add more resources and headcount to it. So really the goal of selecting is it's the one metric that best shows the value of the community to your business. And it's, this is a really challenging metric to, to crack. And that's okay because it takes a lot of identifying what makes sense and how that partners with your business. So it might change a lot initially as you're settling down into this process. Most of the time, a North Star metric hangs around for about 12 to 18 months, might be a little bit shorter, but it's okay for it to change and to evolve as going back to these examples. So we're very familiar with Spotify. It's the time spent listening to music, open table, the number of seated covers, Netflix, the time spent watching content, regardless, I don't even work at any of these companies and I understand these North Star metrics in the sense of why they are meaningful and how they help contribute to understanding the health of the product or in our case, the health of the community and the impact it will drive towards the business. Because I mentioned these are a little bit tricky to come up with, again, another checklist because we all, I like paper, so I have a paper checklist too. So this is something handy to check out, but think about what this means. It's, it expresses value. We can see why it matters. All of those examples I just showed you, you can see why it matters to the business. It represents the vision and, vision and the strategy. 
So the company, the communities, and the company's business strategy should be reflected in it. So if your reach is to, to expand your number of chapter organizers or group organizers by X percent, then you understand that, that will help expand your community. So that's achieving your community goal. But if you, for example, are a customer community, you help that it understands with stickiness and engagement on that side and perhaps add-ons on sales. So think about how this North Star metric can support both sides. It's a leading indicator of success. It predicts the future rather than reflecting on the past. So we talked about input metrics. Those are your past results. That's where you look to understand what's happening, what happened, where should I dig in, where your North Star metric is forward looking. What can I do to reach this? What does success look like? It's actionable. You can take action to influence. So we talked about the things that community managers do and the activities you all plan. Those actions will roll up into this. And so ideally, if maybe you do a big hiring, not hiring blitz, community organizer blitz, get engaged, you would see an upwards tick in community organizers coming through. Or maybe you decide to focus on a succession planning for chapter organizers. And so how do you get more people involved that way? It's understandable. So again, going back to plain language, it's non-technical, it's measurable. You can use instrumentation to track it. You don't have to have the instrumentation today. Don't worry about that. You can get there. You can find partners in the business. You can find individuals to help you there. But at some, when you're ready to commit to it as your North Star metric, figure out some type of instrumentation or some way to do the calculations so that you can track it and show visibility. And lastly, it's not a vanity metric. So when it changes, you can be confident that change is meaningful and valuable rather than something being, um, you know, less than that. So if you can see that customer retention is going up because of your community actions, you can see that is a strong and change, a meaningful change. So those are just kind of the takeaways there on that side. So we will round this out by doing one more quick whiteboarding activity. So if we'll zip back over to our whiteboard, we've talked a little about North Star metrics. Go ahead and add a post-it note for if you had to craft a North Star metric, what would it be for your community? We'll spend about two minutes doing this and then we'll roll into some Q&A. In the meantime, I'm just reminding you if you have questions for Ashley, so drop them on the Q&A chat. So we'll have a full Q&A session in a couple of minutes. So it's definitely really interesting seeing these all coming in. I'm going to put in my ROI hat again. So if you're picking a North Star metric that helps change that conversation from how you're influencing the business, does the metric that you've selected help illustrate how you're influencing the bottom line of the business? We'll do one more minute and then we'll go back. So coming back, a couple of things to remember. I gave it away as a spoiler alert, but remember that selecting that key North Star metric can shift your conversations as community managers and professionals from having a cost center mindset to being a growth center for the business. So whatever that metric is that you're talking about and conveying to the business, how does that also support those conversations from into a growth opportunity for the business? And so with that, we will roll in to Q and A. Thank you, Ashley, uh, for this great presentation. And so Ada has a question. How do you see the North Star metric changing throughout different phases of the community, especially from seed to growth? That's a great question. I think the follow-up question I would ask there is what type of community do you have or are you setting up? So maybe you can chat that in the chat. But I think in terms of, I'm sure at some point when your business made the decision to invest in community, there was some type of business plan or some type of documentation. What were the goals that you outlined there of why you made the justification for the business to invest? I would start there and use that as being your measuring point. And then as you start getting data and your strategy kind of starts coming underneath it, then I would start adding in some of those additional layers. But I think definitely also looking at what, and then also what are the expectations of what the business expects to get out of community? Obviously you as a community manager have your, have an idea of what you want to do, but what is the business looking at in terms of we are going to continue to invest on this? Thank you, Alda. And I can also share from personal experience and some uh, colleagues that are also here that you like a lot of times the business goal changing a bit and that means that the community goals are also changing. So it's, it's hard to uh, predict, but it's all changing together. So Nicola is asked, what if your norm star metric that represents the community and company's objective is something that could be 
influenced by other teams, marketing, sales, etc. I think that's okay. I think that's okay. I would then look at that in the sense, actually, I don't want to put my foot in my mouth here because I also am a firm believer in like being able to, as a community manager, I want to empower each of you to have a strategy to achieve success, but I also think it's important to cross a partner across the aisle. So I think in that regard, I would look at some input metrics that are directly managed and influenced by community activities as a whole. And then I would also look at another layer that is how other parts of the business are supporting this. So if you're looking at marketing, for example, maybe they're putting out, maybe they're your content engine for your community. So they might have metrics around that. And so I would maybe break it out that way in terms of those metri input metrics that are in owned by community professionals and those that are influenced by other parts of the business. I hope it answered your question. I don't see you, so um, can write some chat. Thank you. Uh, great. Aaron, do you want to ask your question? Sure, I can. It's a bit of a mouthful. So I said, one of the challenges that we have is it, it, we've got lots of great input metrics and we know our North Star is platform adoption for right now. But I think it's the challenge we have is creating the connections between those, taking those input metrics and saying, this is how they influence that North Star. And so I don't know whether that's forming those connections or simply just communicating them and, and how they influence each other. But I think that's one of the, the biggest hurdles we have right now. I was wondering if you had any tips on that. Yes. So like my natural resting point is going back to crisping the definition on like platform adoption. Is it adoption on one specific module or like time spent on the platform? Because it, depending on how refined that definition is, then looking at your metrics, I would say, okay, what user groups, for example, are directly feeding in to succeeding and people using this module of the application or what programming or what event, like we had X number of count of events, they all align with supporting this new feature lease release. And this is how we translated to adoption. So I think of it a little bit more that way of you might have to go through and do a little bit of, there might have to be like a little bit of narrative underneath it. But I think if you started at looking at event, does that help? I won't elongate, but hopefully that helps. Definitely. Thank you. You are welcome. If you have questions or if there's anything I can do to help, please don't hesitate in either connecting with me on LinkedIn or I'm ashley.collins at bevy.com and happy to serve as a resource. And I'll turn it back over to you, Tali. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ashley, for, for doing this presentation today. I hope it was valuable for you guys. Uh, feel free to, uh, and actually, please uh, fill out the um, feedback form that you will get out of the Mac. Connect. Also, sorry. Also, if you are new on our meetup, we have a chapter programs uh, group on Slack and uh, the CMX Slack. 